All right, how's it going, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Forward Thinking Founders, where we talk to founders about their companies, their visions for the future, and how the two collide. Today, I'm very excited to be talking to Dayton Mills, who is a co-founder of Branch. Welcome to the show. How's it going? Thanks, man. I'm doing pretty well. I'm excited to be here. It's a pretty big fan of the podcast. So I, I, love, I appreciate that. I lo- I'm getting to this point where I'm starting to have people on the podcast that, that also sometimes listen to it. And I'm like, yes, I'm yeah. getting some level of like <laughs> some level of exposure, which is, which is great. <laughs> um, I see you around all over the place. Yeah. On, on the internet, I, I am all around. It is true. Um, but this is not about, about the podcast. I mean, this is about what you're working on with branch. So what are you working on? If people haven't heard of it, what is it? Branch is, pretty cool in in a lot of ways it's a i'm sure you've seen virtual offices before but there's never been one that's actually spatial so we're building a virtual office that you can actually walk around in and it's it feels more like a space than another user interface right it's it's almost like a a video game married to enterprise software right so it, it's the, the really cool part of it is, you know, it, it lets you walk in and out of conversations. It, it's all spatial, meaning it's proximity based. So you don't hear people unless you're close to them, but you're always connected. So if you walk from one side of the office to the other, you pass by someone in the hallway, you can just say hi to them. You don't have to hop in a channel or a call or whatever. So let's kind of talk about how it works. So let's say I wanted to make one of these. I wanted to host a room. Um, mm-hmm. Or is it a branch? Is it hosting a branch? Is that the terminology? Yeah, yeah. You're, you're basically, you're making a branch, right? A okay. branch of your office. Or- yep. And I do I like, do I, how do I like literally create the room? Can, I, can you actually just walk me through like the user experience of setting up a branch and then kind of how you get people in there? I would just love to learn more about how it works. So right now it's in early access. So you're not actually able to set one up unless you get an invite, but we send you an invite link. It's got a unique token. You click into that and you just enter pretty simple details. You set up your account, you set up your, you know, your organization, um, you get your own subdomain and, uh, you just follow those steps. And as soon as that is done, we, we spin it up and you've got your own little office. Right. And so for now, it's kind of this uh, default layout. Eventually, you'll be able to build your own office completely. Um, but after that, you're in and you, you just invite your, your team in and you're good to go. So let's say I invite my team in. So what, what happens? Like, can you kind of walk? Let's say I have my, my team, you know, Prenda, the last company I worked at, we have a team of like 50. If, if Kelly made one of these, who was our CEO, um, like how would we use it? Would it be like a place where we were working every, during the day and we're in here? Is this something that we do recreationally? Just from, from, from that perspective, how, how um, I guess, how, how, do, how do I think about using it? So the way our people are using it is it, it almost helps as a psychological thing for if you work from home a lot of people have the issue of separating their like home life from their work life like you don't know when to turn it off so a lot of people are actually finding advantages in okay i'm starting my work day i'm going to open up branch it's basically the equivalent of your commute to the office and when you have the office open you know you're, you're at the office you're in work mode and when you're done for the day you just close out of it you leave the office that's it it's replacing the physical office, right? So yeah, you, you leave it open throughout the day. You hang out at your desk or whatever. And everyone else in your org comes in and out as they work through the day. And basically, if you know you want to go talk to whoever, you just walk over to them. Instantly say hi. It's lunchtime. You can all meet in the cafeteria and hang out there. Um, it's just something you kind of leave open throughout the day and you can experience it with other people or just hang out by yourself. However, how for sure. Yeah. It's definitely, it like, it does kind of replace the office in many ways, but just timely um, based on where we are on the world right now. Why'd you decide to get started with this? What was the inspiration for branch? I'd love to just hear about the origin of the story. Yeah. So 
I've pretty much worked remotely my entire life. I lived remotely as well. I grew up in the middle of nowhere, Missouri, the town of like 200 people. So I lived online. And so what I did growing up was I'd hang out with my friends. We'd play video games and just be in Skype calls all day long. And what I realized later looking back, you know, uh, from there, you know, I've, my other experience in remote teams, you know, I've worked in companies that were remote, I've managed remote teams, whatever. And after this uh, whole pandemic thing happened, you know, it kind of became apparent to a lot of people that remote work is fatiguing to a lot of people at the moment. Like people are worn out of doing, you know, back to back Zoom calls. People are sick of, you know, just the, there, there's like a disconnect between your, your peers, like you, it's hard to just chime in with people and so forth. And I've re recognized that when I managed remote teams too. And I kind of was reflecting on my experience growing up. And that's when I realized, you know, even when I wasn't working remotely, I was living remotely, like just playing games with people. And I realized when you're running around in like Minecraft, for example, and you're in a 3D world with your friends and you're over live voice, you hear them, you see them and you watch them move. You're, you're moving around a space together. You're exploring a world together. There's a lot that you're doing more than just voice. So I kind of took my experiences from gaming and was like, you know, wouldn't it be fun if you could all actually work together in a, like a real office that you see? And, and the key that really unlocked everything for us was the spatial proximity aspect which is really the main value of it is allowing people to, you know, spontaneously talk to each other as if you were actually there. Is that kind of your special, like, are you open to diving into how you were able to make it spatial or is that your, is that one of your special sauces, which I would totally appreciate if it was and you don't want to go into it. <laughs> uh, it is kind of our secret sauce. A, a lot of people are are trying to do it and they haven't really figured out how to, actually like lock you into a you know a real world where like your voice interacts with your surroundings like your voice doesn't travel through walls or your voice you know bounces off of things like yeah there's a lot of secret sauce there I guess that's the that's the great thing about um just startups though. Like startups are built on secret sauce right you got you got a thing you got your differentiator then you just scale and you know hopefully people don't figure it out if they figure it out you're already so big it doesn't even matter oh, yeah. there if someone did figure out it wouldn't worry me because the just our, our roadmap for the future is so insane I, I don't think anyone would i'm not worried about anyone doing it no one's gonna do it like we can yeah, that, that's exactly how to think about it. So like, how do you, what do you, what are you spending your time on during the day? You, you have this, this sweet platform, this sweet software. Are you, are you, are you shipping code? Are you trying to get people on it? Um, I guess, I guess what does an average uh, day look like for a founder of branch? So the great thing is I've managed to build a team of about 13 people now. And these are all people I've worked with in the past, dating back to like 2012, people who are in the gaming community with me and so forth. So we've got a great team of people developing product, people working on all of that. Um, so lately I've, I've been focused on uh, fundraising. Before that, it was hectic. For the first four months of Branch, uh, everyone was coding. It was all hands on deck. And um, it was nonstop, just code. You wake up, you code, you, you go to bed, you wake up, you do it again for four months. Lately, yeah, I've just been onboarding people and you know, kind of paying close attention to how they're using it and helping them kind of integrate it into their workflow and, and show them the advantages of it. And just really my day-to-day -day right now is getting people in, you know, focusing on that, that onboarding and really measuring the impact, measuring our retention of it, seeing that people enjoy it, and just working through our roadmap. So is this something that also kind of replaces Slack? Because Slack is a thing where you're on it, and when you have mm -hmm. a question for a coworker, you shoot them a DM, you, is this like channels and stuff. Would you say this is, all, this is a replacement to Slack or like an augmentation, or how, how, is, how does this kind of fit into the, the broader scope of remote tools? It complements it. 
and th this is a very interesting thing I've thought about a lot. If you look at traditional offices, and, and I mean physical offices, people still use Slack even in those buildings, right? Slack is not just a remote work tool. It, it's something that people, you, you can have an office, you could be sitting at a desk and someone's right across the room and people would still Slack, right? Um, the point there is Slack is not the big replacement for an office. What we're trying to do is replace the actual office itself, not Slack. So it complements it, really. And people have offices in Slack, you have branch in Slack. We're replacing the office bit. And what, what would you say, like, if you, if you're kind of looking at um, kind of a, the macro trend of, of remote work, and now you got COVID, which is kind of, I think, accelerate. I mean, I think it was, event, it was inevitable. Yeah, it was. But, yeah, it was. I, I agree. Because um, I'm actually similar to you. I I've always been remote and I kind of like, I, I, I do my, I do business on the internet. That's it. Like I don't do business in person. Um, mm -hmm. So it's like, um, I definitely agree with that. But I'm kind of curious now that things are accelerated remote wise, what do you think are some other things that need to be built um, in the remote world, like within the scope of what you're doing or totally outside the scope? Like what's missing now that we're all, we're all kind of here. We're all kind of remote. Uh, what, 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 what are you noticing that's still missing to make it a better experience? The biggest thing lacking from remote work is serendipity. Serendipity is the, the magic, the, the inspiration that happens out of nowhere, right? Things like in remote work, it's all very forced. You have people doing forced happy hours like, hey, at Friday from this time to this time, we're all going to get on Zoom and talk and work on this or whatever. Um, I'm very anti-asynchronous. A lot of people are you know, working on asynchronous things. And um, the funny thing is sometimes they're even working on those tools synchronously. <laughs> they they kind of get a bit hypocritical there, but I think that, um, that that's the thing that's missing. You, you get serendipity from synchronously being together, but the problem is you can't force that togetherness. It has to be spontaneous. So, you know, things like always on communication where, you know, like in branch, you kind of just, you walk by someone, you can talk to them. You don't have to click in a channel, join them, whatever. You're not intimidated by joining a discord channel that's already got people in it because you don't want to interrupt, right? Um, there's no awkward hellos. There's no awkward goodbyes and things like that do a lot for culture. It's a lot about remote work culture and fostering an environment where people are free to just speak up. Even in Slack channels, people are kind of afraid to speak up. Uh, whereas, you know, voices, it doesn't last forever. If you say it, it's gone. And that's it. Yeah, well, that's, that seems to be, um, now that we're all inside, it seems to be the, uh, something that people are trying to, like, figure out, like, how do you create serendipity? Um, so it kind of seems to be, like, like, a, like a topic that, that, that people are thinking yeah. about, which is kind of mm -hmm. fun because... It, the platform that creates serendipity or the platforms that create serendipity are just like, I mean, like if you can do that, like you can build it, you know, this, you can build something pretty freaking huge um, because that, that is missing in remote work. I, I totally agree. And I kind of want to, I kind of want to like move into in regards to building something huge and, and, and whatnot would love to kind of hear if you're open to it, like 10 years down the line, 15 years down the line for branch, like what do you, what could it look like? Or I guess in other words, like what's what's the big vision for what you're building with Branch and what direction are you rowing in? The biggest value of Branch is its spontaneity and the spatial aspect of it. That's currently already in place. What we plan to do going forward is expand it more as a platform. So you can see, you know, right now it's it's a lot of, you know, remote teams are using it to build you know, produce serendipity in their workspace. However, this could be applied to things like education. Um, we have lecturers from Stanford who are um, trialing branch to, you know, do lectures, right? It, it, it could be an educational tool. You have people who are doing, you know, completely online classes. It could be used as an educational tool for them. Um, we're looking at moving into virtual events 
conventions, you know, um, where we have this, we already have a whole map, right, of an office. Who's to say we can't, you know, build a campus or we can build a whole convention hall with booths and panelists, and things like that, and have people have real virtual events in it. And moving past that, moving into even more of a consumer space, you know, I, I had a long distance relationship for a while, and this could have been something really cool to like feel present with someone, right? So even spaces where, you know, families, partners, people can meet in a space online, um, and beyond that, almost build sort of a metaverse, I guess, where you can almost connect the worlds and travel between them so they're not isolated anymore, which would be really crazy. I'm talking like online cities, right? Yeah, for sure. If you, I mean, like, <laughs> if you can build a, yeah, like in the short term, you build like all these different like rooms or offices, and then you enable like connect them. Like you built, you built like Sims, but IRL. Like, like mm -hmm. you built, which is which is crazy. That's like it's pretty cool. Um, to make that happen, though, to accomplish these things, you'll need some help, right? Like, you'll obviously need tons of users and customers and stuff. You might need investors if you want to go down that path. You will need employees more than you have, et cetera. But what you'll definitely mm -hmm. need help with 100%, or sorry, what you, who, you, who you'll need help from is from the forward-thinking founders community. So for my last question for you is how can the forward-thinking founders community help with what you're doing? And is there an ask that you have for any of the listeners in a way that we can help? If you are truly interested in Branch and you think it would be something that helps you or just something that looks really cool to you. Um, you can get early access to it. It's not an obnoxious wait list where you're, you're waiting for six months for this exclusive access. That's not why we have it. Um, it's not to exclude people. It's to, you know, make sure we can craft a better product. So if you want to be a part of that process and beta test it with us and give us feedback and kind of help shape it into, you know, the future we have in mind or the future you have in mind, uh, you can just go to this site, sign up for early access, and uh, or shoot me a DM and say you found it on the podcast. No, I'll make sure you get in early. Much appreciated. Um, <laughs> for people that want to shoot you a DM or they want to try it, you know, they want to try it. What's the website? What's your Twitter? What's your email? How can people get in touch? Yeah, it's uh, branch.gg. It's our website. You can find me on Twitter at Dayton Mills. Uh, DMs are always open. There every day. <laughs> you're you're on Twitter. I, I'm never on Twitter. What do you, you? That's so weird that you're. I'm just kidding. Twitter is where it's going on. Like, what would you say? What would you consider if you were to build? A, let's say you built a city with like this, and like like ten years down the line, what would Twitter be? And like, what would what would you consider Twitter as? Like the like the like the airport. <laughs> like, what is Twitter <laughs> if there was a virtual city? You know, I think it was. Andrew Chin, maybe somebody was tweeting about how um, Gen Z kind of grew up playing like in these amazing, fantastic worlds of Minecraft and Roblox with all these like, you know, very visual appealing like 3D worlds where they're all hanging out with each other. Um, he said, you really think they're going to find Twitter to be compelling, <laughs> right? Like this next generation who's so used to this crazy stimulus. Are, are they going to find a wall of text to be interesting. I, I think that, you know, as we do expand more towards that long-term vision and kind of open it up, that it could be a, a social hangout space that the, the next generation really enjoys. Twitter will, uh, yeah, I guess it, it actually already has kind of been an airport. A lot of our, everyone on our wait list has come from Twitter, so. <laughs> yeah, Twitter is, if you're not on, I feel like by now people that listen to this podcast are like, Matt, stop talking about Twitter. But it's just, I think it's so important to be on at least today if you're doing, if you're in tech. Well, regardless, thank you for coming on to the podcast. Really interesting stuff that you're building and looking forward to trying it out at some point. So thanks for coming on to the podcast. Yeah. Thanks, Matt. Thanks for having me.